Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean, and in today's lesson, we're going to do something that builds off our last lesson, which is just finding the area between two curves, but this time with respect to y instead of respect to x. So you'll see it's not too much different, but there is some things that are a little bit challenging for kids in thinking with terms of y. Let's take a look at this area here. This is actually from our last lesson. So just as a quick reminder, what we did was we'd set up the integral where this thing, so I'm, you can write this down if you want, just underneath it. This is with respect to x. I'm going to repeat that I start it here at x is 0, and then I go up to where x is 6, and then it's this graph on top which was the square root of x, and then you subtract the graph on bottom, which in this case was nothing. So then that's that with respect to x. And then you add the second integral, which was starting at 6, and you go until you get to 9. And then again, it's the square root curve on top, and then you subtract the thing on bottom, which was x minus 6. That's the, the boundary that's on bottom of this area. And that's all again with respect to x. All right, so that's what we did before. We started with our small x, go to our large x, depending on how the region is divided up. So now let's figure out how do we do this with respect to y. The first thing you have to do is take these equations and change them so that they are in terms of y, meaning solve for x. If I square both sides, you'd end up with y squared equals x. So there, now we have x equals. So this graph right here represents y squared. It's x equals y squared. That's this graph. This graph here, if you solve for x, I would add 6 to both sides. You'd end up with y plus 6. And there, that is this line. So I could say this graph represents x equals y plus 6. So we're so used to thinking of graphs in terms of x, where it's always y equals, but it doesn't have to be that way. These graphs could also, you could flip it around and make it be x equals. So this x equals y squared, this piece of this graph, is exactly the same thing as y equals the square root of x. Same with this line here, x equals y plus 6. Okay, now we have it in terms of y, so we can set up an integral in terms of y. This is cool. I love this. So you take the integral and you look at this thing. You think, what is the boundary on the right side of this area? That's what you start with. See, before when we did the x, we started with the graph that was on top, the one that was above. But then when you're doing it with respect to y, you think which graph is the one on the right side. So the boundary of this is the, on the right side is just this one line. And so it's y plus 6. That's what we start with, y plus 6. And then you subtract the graph that's on the left. So here's the graph on the left, this y squared graph. So we subtract y squared. Now, what about the boundaries? Before we did 0 to 6, we did x value from 0, x value to 6. Now, for this region, we're going to do the y values. The smallest y value of this region is a 0. And the highest y value of this region, which is right there, that y value is a 3. So this is the setup, and then you say with respect to y instead of with respect to x. And then that's it. This integral and this integral are exactly the same thing. They equal each other. If you worked this out by hand, you'd see that this it's the same thing as this one. Now this is kind of nice because with this example, with respect to y is a much simpler integral to work with as opposed to this crazy stuff over here. And that's why at sometimes we'd rather work with respect to y in, in certain situations. Now, let me just say, though, real quick before we go on to some other examples, if you were to use a calculator, you know, your math 8 stuff, or excuse me, math 9, math 9 in the TI-84 where you set up the integral, when you push the xt theta button, here, let me just pull it up and show you. There we go. So we got from 0 to 3, and then we'd say here we would not have... We would not say y, we would just push this button right here, the xt theta n button. This is a variable button. It, the calculator doesn't care if it's a y variable or not. You just use variable. So just don't get that confused. And then so you'd say x plus 6 minus x squared. And then here, of course, you'd have to say with respect to x. So if when you're using the calculator, you still use x's, even though here it says y's, because this x just represents it's a variable. Okay, let's move on to our next example. This one's a little easier because I gave it to you in terms of y. So it's x equals, this one's x equals. Let's just make sure we know which one is which. So this little parabola looking thing, the sideways parabola is x equals 3 minus y squared. And then this line is the uh, y plus 1. Let, I'm going to leave off the x. Well, now nah, I'll put it there. x equals y plus 1. That's the straight line here. So let's set up our integral. Now, do we need one or two integrals? Let's look at the right side. This is the curve on the right side, and it never changes. 
it is 3 minus y squared everywhere on the right side of the shaded region. Now let's look on the left. The left side is this flat line the whole time. So we only need one integral to set this up. The smallest y value is right there. That is a negative 2. The highest y value is right there, and that is a 1. And then we do the graph that's on the right and subtract the graph that's on the left. That would be the smaller region. And then that is with respect to y. And you could simplify this. Let me just simplify that real quick. I put the y squared in front, so there, that is what it simplifies to. So that integral represents this area. So once you get used to this, it's pretty fast and easy. You just have to think a little bit differently because you're thinking the right side of the region and the left side of the region. Okay, let's do one more that's a bit more challenging. And this time, we're going to set up the integrals with respect to x and the integrals with respect to y. In order for us to do that, we need to know all of these different intersection points of this strange thing. So this one's easy. That one right there is just 0, 1. And then that one there is 1, 0. But we need the, this one and this one. Okay, so I'm going to save you some time. I've already done it on a calculator. I graphed them and figured out the point of intersection. So just write these down. This one on top is 0 0.5 comma 1.75. That's where this intersection is. And then this intersection point right there is 1.36602. I tried to write several decimals. And then the y value is 0 0.13397. All right, so you get those written down. And now let's start setting this thing up. So we start with respect to x. We need to think we're going from the left to the right. But as you move from the left to the right, the, the graph on bottom is the same the whole time but the graph on top changes right here. So I'm gonna draw a little line right here to remind myself that I'm doing two separate integrals. So I'm going to do an integral from zero to 0 0.5. And then I take the graph that's on top, which is that line, which is three halves x plus one. And then you subtract the graph that's on bottom. And this parabola here is, which one is that parabola? That's this one, right? X minus one quantity squared. And then that's all with respect to x. So that's just my first integral. That's just this piece that I just did right now. Now I'm going to add the integral of the second piece here. So again, I'm starting at 0 0.5 for my x value. And I go up until I get to this weird decimal, 1.36602. And the graph on top is this parabola. That parabola is which one? It's this one, 2 minus x squared. So I start with 2 minus x squared, and then I subtract the one that's on bottom, which is that parabola, quantity x minus 1 squared, and then that's again with respect to x. So there's my two integrals that would represent these two regions right here. Now let's set this up with respect to y. So I'm going to erase my blue stuff here and restart this with respect to y. And as you do this, now we have to think differently. You're thinking what is the right side of the graph? The right side is this curve here. Oh, we can't even do this yet. Hold on, we gotta change these equations so that they're in terms of y. So solve for x. I'm gonna add the x squared to the left side, subtract the y, and then I get x equals the square root gives me plus or minus the square root of two minus y. Now the reason it's plus or minus is because this parabola right here, the one that we're working with, the left side of it is the negative square root. The right side of it is the positive square root. So this right here is the square root of 2 minus y, all underneath the radical. But it's the positive side. This side over here is the negative. So we don't even need that one. So we only need the positive square root of 2 minus y. OK, next one. Here you take the square root of both sides. So again, we're going to get plus or minus the square root of y equals x minus 1. Add the 1 to both sides. So this is going to give me x equals plus or minus the square root of y plus a 1 on the outside of the radical. So why is it plus or minus? Again, the left side of this would be, so this right there would be negative square root of y plus 1. And this side right there would be the positive square root of y plus 1. What's left? I need this one. I got to figure out what that is. I'm going to multiply by 2 to get rid of the fraction. And then I solve for x. So there's my x, and what is this? That's this line right there. That's that flat line, so this part. That's, what, that's what's going to come in handy when we get to there. Okay, now this one is as hard as... You're not going to have one on a test that's nearly as hard as this one. I just wanted to show you a pretty challenging one. This is tricky because there are three different regions. You see here, this on the right side and on the left side. When you start comparing right side of the, the area, the left side of the area, this right side changes right there. It is this graph at first, and then it changes to this graph. And then it changes again here. 
And why does it change there? Because the left side of the graph, it's this parabola at first, and then it changes to this line. So we have to do three integrals, holy cow. All right, let's set this up. So our first integral, this region is, the bottom of it is a zero, and then what's the top of it? It's this y value right there, 0 0.13397. And then we take the right side, which is this positive square root of y plus one, and subtract the left side, this part right here is the negative square root of y minus plus one with respect to y. And yes, we could clean this up. We're not gonna worry about this for the lesson. We're just trying to figure out how to set up integrals. And then we say plus, and now let's do the next. So we just did this one. That's the one we just did. Now let's do this region. So we go the smallest y value here, again, is 0 0.13397. And then it goes up until we get to a y value of one. And then you start off with the graph that's on the right side, which is the square root of two minus y. And then we subtract the graph that's on the left side, which is this thing again, negative square root of y plus one on the outside with respect to y. And then plus again, holy cow. And then we have one more region, which is this top region. And why is it another one? Because we are changing the graph, the boundary on the left side. That left boundary is no longer this parabola. So the right side is still this thing. Oh, we gotta set up our integral first. So the bottom of the integral is a y value of one and the top of the integral, the top of the boundary would be a y value of 1.75. And then we start with this part of the parabola here. So we're gonna say square root of two minus y, and then we subtract in parentheses the line, and the lines equation is this right there with respect to y. Holy cow, that is a mess of a problem. Okay, this is, you're never gonna see, you have to do one that's that hard, but I figured if you can understand this one, you'll be able to handle anything that's in this packet and what's gonna come in front of you, all right? So we've covered it all. A lot of this is just setting up the integrals. There's not too much where you have to actually do, take the integral yourself. You can use a calculator on, on this lesson. So rock that mastery check and I'll see you back in our next one.